30 pound arches paper and uh, cold press. I like arches because it's consistent and I always kind of know what it's going to do. It's not always the case. It used to be a little different, but they've, they've managed to get it right. The sizing is just right. And I respond my method. Well, you'll see. I'm hoping you can see these pallets up here because that's really where all the thinking goes in these pallets. Oops. I lose more brushes that way. Right in, slide right into the trash can. Look at that. Move it over here. Um, okay, that's a really in yellow. I like to work with sometimes warm and cool colors. Uh, warm and cool yellows, warm and cool reds, warm and cool uh, blues, whatever that means. And uh, let's see. I'm going to make my flesh tones. And the flesh tones I use a lot are, is um, American Journey Raw Sienna, or you could use Da Vinci's. And I'm making three, <coughs> excuse me, three puddles. And one will be with, uh, that's my main puddle. Then I'm going over here. I rinse my brush. Let's see how I'm, I waste a lot of paper towels. Uh, which I don't like to do, but <coughs> it's my process. Here's the cobalt violet light hue. That's uh, Sennelier makes this brand. And I'm going to mix it with this one here. So this will be my main flesh tint. I have this in the wrong place. I'm going to flip that out here. Oh, that's about 10 bucks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I told my class that I, I told my class that I have I had a dear dear friend who's been in a lot of my workshops. And she sits there and counts how much money I waste. <laughs> okay, so that, it, it looks to me, it's a little hard to tell, but I think I put a little bit more raw sienna in. So that's my puddle, my name. I paint like that at home. <laughs> so it's easier. I just keep going like this. And I never have to keep breaking off paper towels. All right, so... Let's do some blues now. Might as well break in another brush. These are little half inch flats and I love them. They're, um, they're very cheap. All my brushes are cheap, reasonable, inexpensive. Um, I'll tell you as I'm going along what brush I'm using. These are half inch flats. They're very stiff. See, they bounce back. And you know, I just realized that I didn't turn my cell phone off again. You know what? It's your cell phone. I bet. I will guarantee mine will go off. <laughs> so I'm just going to mute it. I'm so glad that I thought of that. Okay. Anyway, all right. So. <laughs> Did I call somebody? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then let's go for the blues. All right, I've got, there's Cerulean, that's my old friend. I've had that for 20 some years. I've always painted with that Cerulean blue. And then I've got Arctic Ice. Arctic Ice is American Journey. If it's a funny name, it's Chief Joe's. Arctic Ice, and that's, it's very similar to uh, Cerulean but it's a little more transparent. It reminds me a little bit of manganese, but it's not as... Can you common. spell that? Uh, Arctic. A oh, Arctic. A-R-C. A -R -C. I don't pronounce it. Okay, there. okay. Arctic. Arctic. Arctic, okay. I always type it wrong, too. Um, <laughs> and then uh, this is sky blue, which is another... Uh, this is also an American journey. It's a little more opaque, um, but it doesn't seem to have the granulation that cerulean blue does. That cerulean blue has, like this is this is the sky blue. I'm not painting with my paintings. And this is uh, cerulean. So cerulean has a nice natural feel. 
but it, they're very similar. So anything will do. And then I've got cobalt blue, which is, you know, a regular good old cobalt blue. Okay. And let's see, I'll keep mixing. I like to mix a green puddle, green puddles. I don't like them to be too specific, and I don't like greens by themselves, so I like to mix them first. Let's take shadow green. This is Skip's green. My class knows that uh, Skip's green is American Journey. It's um, Skip's green, I say, fixes everything. <laughs> everything. It's like a band-aid of paint. You're in trouble, just throw in a little Skip's green and you'll be out. <laughs> Okay, so it's a it's a nice yellow green. This is sap green. I'm just mixing a lot of my stuff together. I forget what this is. Oh, this must be June bug. Well, June bug. Yeah, yeah, June bug. Oh, here. Actually, I don't even know if I'll use these colors. But when I paint, it's probably almost like a an oil painter's palette in a way. A lot of colors out there. That's a June bug, and this is, I think. Oh, what is this? <laughs> I forget, I just put this out. Um, let me see. Okay, Prussian blue. Prussian's a pretty uh, sta you know, staple as far as colors. By the way, I congratulate you out here on being such a wonderful watercolor society. I love watercolor, so it's fun to be with other watercolors to love watercolor. Uh, this is ultramarine blue which I love, nice and clean. I'll probably hit that in the background. I'm trying, I'm going to try to <clears throat> get that made up. So it's like I have to make all these puddles before I paint. That way, if I don't feel like painting, I've at least done something. No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I painted. <laughs> I guess I've got a little paint. And by the way, if, if feel free to ask any questions, just, you know, go ahead and ask. Um, this is mineral violet. This is a whole line color that I like. It's very transparent. Most of the colors I use are transparent. Um, and this is permanent magenta. Uh, um, American Journey's permanent magenta. It's a little, the whole line's a little cooler, and the permanent magenta is a little warmer. Permanent rose, alizarin, can't forget alizarin. Anyway, I try to keep my greens on one, my blues, purples, my real clean blues over here, and my flesh tones here. Uh, so that I think I've made enough puddles. Okay, so I'm thinking before I start, one of the big things about this painting is the, um, the shadows on the white. She has a blue uh, costume on, like blue stripe or something. I don't know. Better not do all that detail. We'll be here all night. But um, I'm thinking about what color shadows, and I'm thinking maybe some violets in the um, in the white shadows. So I have to come up with a, a violet color. You could use cobalt blue. Permanent rose. That's always a good one. So, or mix. Yeah, let's do purple blue and permanent rose. That's kind of a a neutral color. Not neutral, but a nice lavender. I also have this wonderful color here. I I think I better get that ready. This is Holbein's cobalt violet light. It's a um, it's a little different than the cobalt. You can see the temperature difference there. This is the cool violet and that's the warm violet. Very different. They're both called cobalt violet light. But one's the like you, different brands. Every company seems to make their colors different. I forgot my burnt sienna. How did I do that? Oh well, I'll put that on here. Okay. I like Windsor Newton's burnt sienna. What, um, 
Anyway, there's other colors here. I'll just put a few around here. Okay, I better start painting. But I, I like to have everything kind of ready to go and a lot of pigment. Remember, like I said, when I load my brush, it's I'm going to start out. I'll probably start out with the, the head, the face, because that'll. You know what? I did forget a hair dryer. Anybody have a hair <laughs> Okay. Well, then what I might do is put in the shadow shape really dark. I'll go ahead and put all of this in shadow and down in here. So what I'll do is put most of it in shadow except for a little part on the light side of her face. I like to um, think of painting the shadow shapes all in one value. And then when it dries, then I'll knock them down, but leaving the white paper over here. So I'll leave a little note to myself um, here of where I want the, I put little, little uh, notes like circles of where I want to keep the white paper. Maybe on this side of the face, very light. And then some of it's coming down here. I don't know. I'll, I'll just try to remember to get a little light, but I'm going to start out really dark in that wash. All right. Look, it's only a piece of paper. <laughs> so, okay. This is just in case I want to try a color out. I'm just, I've got this paper ready to go. All right. I'm going to load. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, this is a 26, number 26, 7700 Grand Round Low Cornell. It's a synthetic brush. They're very reasonably priced. I've been using these for 20, 20 some years, and I've never thrown one out. And, and my students borrow them, so imagine. <laughs> they're workforces, but they're synthetic, so they're really, they're really fun. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put that right in the shadow, you know, right in the um, flesh tone. That's the flesh tone for the top part. I'm, I think I'm going to be, um, I love Charles Reed's work, and I love how he, he loses eyes and stuff. So I'm going to try that. Put a little bit on. This is still all the shadow shape. And I'm probably going right down through the eye. Maybe I'll accidentally leave part of that eye open. Okay. Now, before I get very far, and I've got to do this very fast, is I'm gonna I want to change the color, but maybe oh I know what I'm gonna do. Let's get more violet. Okay, that's a little strong, so I have to go to an empty spot and cover that again. Let's just so when I put this on, I'm like feathering it on. I need to get this to the color I want quickly. I can't go back a lot and change things. I've got to get it to where I want it to be pretty quickly. It still looks kind of light, because I know it's going to dry a lot darker. Lighter. I mean lighter, thank you. <laughs> Doing that all week. Okay, let's try the Arctic Ice uh, just to see what happens. No, let's try June Bug. <laughs> try the June Bug. I'm not sure. Well, that's a little strong. That's a little strong. Okay, I'll go with a cobalt. Oops, there we go. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to try to find that. Got a little muddy. Okay, let's see if we can get that again. Um, is that Juno? No. Let's try the cobalt. I'm oh, sorry, I changed my mind. I, it's what what when I put it down, I had too much pigment in the tip of that brush, mm -hmm. so it looks a little muddy to me. So it's not very exciting. Okay, we go back to the. I want I want I like to paint until I get something that I really like. So I watch the painting a lot more um, than, okay, let me just soften this edge. That, it's going to have a hard edge there. 
I kind of like that. I'm happy over here, but I'm not happy here. So let's. Usually I have this all in light, this side of the face, but since there's a shadow from the, I was going to do the shadow after the first wash dry, but I'm, not, I'm going to do it all at once. So pull the shadow shape down. So we're just really painting the shadow shape. I want to soften this edge a little bit here. Just kind of smush it. I keep, something keeps saying green, green. I don't know what it means. But. Okay, let me try, let me try that. Okay, put a little green in there. Maybe that'll satisfy me. Whatever. Okay, let's go back to load up over here. Maybe a little more cobalt violet light hue. Pull that wash down. I'm trying to catch those edges so I can pull the face wash down. And I have to have the edges the way I want them before I leave. How about we better pull this down here? So it, it has to be a nice shape. You have to be happy before I leave because if I'm not, it's not going to be easy to go back and change it. I feel like I want a little warmth over in that. So I'm even making a little peachy color with the <coughs> cobalt violet, I mean, permanent rose and uh, a really, maybe a little, let's go back over the brush to it. You have to have enough water on your brush. It's always this right amount. It's like the Goldilocks roll. Not too much, not too little, but just right. Okay, I'm getting too picky here. Okay. okay, I'm going to rinse my brush, and it got a little too dark there, so I'm just going to smoosh that edge. And that's very technical. <laughs> Smushing. Yep, you know all about that. Okay, I'm going to, you know, I saw Charles Breed, do, I mean, I've heard, I know. Okay, so I don't have any tissues, but I'm just going to gently, not blotting, just kind of lifting a little. Here, soften that. I like it. I want some hard edges and some soft edges. Most of the time I do it with my uh, brush, but I better hurry up and get this. I know I can tell it's drying. Okay, let's bring this down. So far I'm happy with it. Okay. <coughs> so I'm making a pattern, um, painting the shadow shape, really. This is, this is really the, the scariest part of it. So if this isn't done the way I want it, we might as well you know, not go on. Right? <laughs> Just tear it up and start over. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But this is why I always start with the face.